what you think about this situation? I think it's a horrible situation that they're doing to our people. It seems that they're trying to squeeze and clear the road now to infiltrate into Sandy Ground and to try to squeeze our people back into a corner. Um, and I'm here on the French side standing up with our people and letting them know that what's happening now should not be the case. Okay. If it can happen over here, it can definitely happen over there. We have to stand together and we have to stand up for our people. All right. Okay, you've been around the people for a little while now. You saw they came in to bring food. They stopped yeah. them. They even stopped the garbage trucks from coming in to clean up. What Absolutely. do you think about that? I came that? across with uh, my cousins to bring some food for the people. Uh, they stopped us at the entrance. They refused to allow any food, any juice, any water to come into the people. But um, we were persistent. And you can see the people of St. Martin are persistent. Um, there's others bringing in food to help them as well. The military is stopping them. But... We are continuing to, even if we got to carry them up, the young boys are coming up with their scooters to assist us to bring in the product, the relief item for them. Um, so it's going fairly well. Well, we're here tonight just giving Aya a little update. So you, you probably already see that, uh, well, Aya already probably hear the message of the Minister uh, de l'Outre-mer concerning the, the situation um, in St. Martin right now concerning the PPRN. Uh, we just come out of a meeting where we, the collectivity, President of the CCI, the CUSA, we, the President gives and invite also the Conseil Territorial des Jeunes, uh, other social, social professionals. He had um, two pastors also, uh, some technicians of the collectivity, and we all met a while ago uh, to decide of the plan d'action, you know, what we're putting in place for, for the, the, the crisis that we're living right now uh, together. So we all uh, witnessed the message of Annick Girardin, the Minister of Outre-mer, um, on her concerns and what she think about the, the, the paper in right now. And it was not really satisfying. So tonight, yeah, through this live, I'm going to try to give you a little update with uh, some of my colleagues. Yeah, good evening. Um, it is clear that the message of the people uh, on, on the barricades uh, for the last four days has not been um, heard to the ministry. Um, so I invite you to join us and join uh, all of the crews uh, assembled tonight. Tomorrow, gospel is at 10 o'clock in a peaceful demonstration. Um, it's not so much a march as it's a peaceful standard demonstration. Here on the waterfront, I have invited you to put on um, something white, preferably a white, a white shirt, so that everyone we can have um, a synergy in the crowd and, and show a clear message that it's it's not what what they are saying that there's a there's a few hooligans that that are blocking the street. It's a clear message from the entire population that this 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 answer um, is not satisfying to no no no, no member of the party, whether it's young or old and or independent. It is simply not not. not um, the reason of us here, um, Augusta, uh, yes, I'm sorry, um, is because uh, this morning we had a meeting and uh, we took a decision that a decision would be given from the government according to a demand that we made um, publicly, considering what is happening actually. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, decided to have, since this decision is not a one-man decision or one-group decision, we have signed all together a declaration to a deliberation in Island Council in the month of July, stating certain things specifically concerning the PPRN by anticipation, that we were not against a modification but we didn't want the what was proposed to us or suggest to us through that preparing by anticipation that was very clear mm -hmm. we wanted to keep that unity um, we also <coughs> heard because we asking the government the national government to hear the needs to hear the cry to hear the suffering of the population we wanted also um, to show the population that we also heard their cry, their need of having a unity among this territory for something that is most important for us, the, the, um, the, the constitution and, and the, the land that is today uh, a priority. Now, what we did and we created as a crisis, a Comité Operationnel Territorial, in which we invited, of course, all the elected members majority and opposition, just mm -hmm. like an island council, but we added Monsieur Julien Gomes, which is the Conseil Comité Social, Madame Angèle Dormois, which is the President of the Chamber of Commerce. We invited also the, the, um, the Parliament of, of Youth, um, that was represented also, um, the Tourism Office, and um, also the clergy 
um, because it's a it's the, it's a matter of each and every one. We said it was not politics. It was strictly and only the interest of our population. So everyone have an input in the decision that will be taken. Now the minister deliver her message. On that message and the response to our letter and the, and the demands that we made, she did a certain amount of suggestion. Now we are clear that on all those suggestions that was made, we are not against those and everyone here will speak out and explain um, because it was a unanimity decision. We are clear that those decisions that was given is a good step forward, but the main point and the main demand of the population and everyone considered unanimously that that demand was not respected as far as we are concerned. So we wanted to demonstrate that non-satisfaction of the decision that is taken by government, national government by holding, holding sorry, a, demonst a demonstration, a pacific demonstration um, on the waterfront tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. And we're asking each and every one, the entire population to come out massively on the waterfront dressed in white to show the pacific part of this demonstration but to show a strong message to our national government that the demand of the population of St. Martin was very clear and we want the answer to be also very clear. So tomorrow, once again, we're asking each and every one, we wanted the unity back of each and one here who decides on this island. We're asking also the population as much as we understand and as much as we um, consider um, the courage of those that were standing for four days on those points and each part of this island in a pacific way to show our grievances and to show that the face of St. Martin and the demand of St. Martin can, for it to be respected. This is, a, this is essentially really? what this meeting was about, bringing back unity on this territory among the demand that changed the lives of Monsieur, the population. Monsieur le Président, uh, GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Megawati is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. St. Martin people walk in between them and when they know it's time for business they just step from between them this is not about being afraid no one is afraid we just want things to be correct for us as a people from this island that's it right now no one could pass through they could park Bellevue, pass Bellevue, you want to go through, use the upper road and walk right through. And if you come through the lower road to see what's happening, tell the fellas you're passing and they're going to allow you to pass. That's it. We, didn't, uh, we don't like violence. We never was violent people, was always nice people. But they bring the violence to us, so, uh, you know, that's the way it is. They bring it to us and we take it back to them. 
and people I don't want to hear anything about tourism uh, tourism is one thing but when the people of the island can't live and others could live as they want how they please and you could bring forces bring them in in order to keep the people them down then it's going to be a problem it's going to be a problem so you know uh, this problem is going to get solved because France cannot afford for this island to create a problem for the Dutch side I guarantee that the Dutch side is right now talking to Holland to talk to France to tell them we are in the same union we need to calm down and deal with this situation differently I know that's exactly what's happening now I just hope none of these young fellas don't get stupid and decide they're gonna fire off a shot at anyone because it's gonna bring out a, a different kind of war So far it's been going good, a little fire, some rocks, and we good tear gas, we good with that. Yeah, they're moving forward. Here they come. Major Bushra. Look at this. Tell him, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Do not touch me. Don't touch me. Do not touch me. If you touch me, I don't want to be involved in this. I'm just documenting. If you touch me, any one of them touch me, they're going to have a problem. They're going to have a problem. that we were not in favor of this version of the preparing, yet you choose to pursue and to rub it, try to rub it down our throat. So here's our answer as a united people. It has to stop. And as long as you don't take a decision to say it's going to be uh, retracted, we will be mobilized. You will have us in front of you in a very peaceful, yet firm manner, because this is unacceptable what is happening to us as the people of this country. Uh, like he said, some of the point that was proposed in her reaction and the decision this afternoon acceptable we can work with those points but we got to get to the bottom of the issue and that is to say um we check that and then we will talk from continuing on other points as long as that isn't clear you will face us what i want to want to do is take this time out to commend all those brave persons who started out this movement from thursday okay so we now have the rest of us have a moral obligation to be in solidarity with them and reinforce the numbers so it will be unacceptable if just a few hundred of us gather tomorrow we got to get there and by the thousands to make sure that our forceful uh justified or legitimate demand gets the attention and that is to have to be there in the thousands Make use of web mobile banking with easy access and direct usage of face recognition. Pen code. Or fingerprint. Download web mobile banking app and make your transaction from anywhere at any time. For more information, visit web-bank.net forward slash quick dash login.
I take this opportunity to speak to you on a number of concerns. The word vindication, according to Oxford Dictionary, says the action of clearing someone of blame or suspicion. Proof that someone or something is right, reasonable or justified. Allow me to elucidate further. It is evident in today's government, caretaker government that was there before, as we have heard time and time again, several matters was brought forward by the then opposition, now presently interim government. The government of today, of course, faces its own reality with having a split in the coalition. Why would I say this? What makes me say this? There is an obvious split in the present coalition government, as once again evidence, and the most recent evidence, was witnessed on Thursday during the installation committee for the Mullet Bay Inquiry Commission on the floor of Parliament. Prior to that, of course, it was very clear that there was also testimony of a clear split during the much-talked-about Princess Juliana International Airport financing agreement prior to its signing. On December the 2nd, urgent public meeting number 8 on the airport financing clearly had one member of the National Alliance had a clear difference of opinion versus that of the Honorable Prime Minister. Those two instances, and probably more if not many others in other facets, are clear that there is clearly a difference of opinion, a split in what is a consensus that should be amongst what would be hopefully a strong nine-led government, nine members of parliament-led government. The government that I was a part of and my colleague, and supported by eight members of parliament, also heard repeatedly, time and time again, that there were no quorum, there were postponements of meetings. But imagine a coalition of nine, that there is meetings being postponed, or no quorum for meetings in and itself. We all can recall repeatedly being said, ministers or their replacement must come to parliament when called. We are their bosses. We all can recall when we were being called and the schedule was being blamed on the then Chair Lady, Mrs. M. M. P. Westcott Williams. We all can recall when numerous questions and information was being provided to the House of Parliament. But obviously we should have seen now today those practicing what they preached so well. Just a few days in office and already there's a postponement from the Minister of Justice in regards to the public meeting of Parliament regarding the draft national ordinance to amend the penal code, the draft national ordinance to establish a new penal criminal procedure, and the draft national ordinance to amend Book 2 of the Civil Code. We also have seen the postponement of public meeting of Parliament regarding the status update of the government long lease, lease land agreement with Mr. Denisio Wyatt. In addition to that, we have also seen quorums of meetings not being held where they were supposed to have been a strong storm nine, so to speak, of MPs. Allow me to ask some questions that the public of St. Martin continues to want to know. One of them continues to remain the audit of the St. Martin Carnival Development Foundation. And yes, why am I adamant about that? Because having served as president of the Carnival Foundation for 2011 and 2012 Carnival celebrations, having been responsible for the people's money, it comes with a level of accountability. In March of 2018, the then government at the time, headed by fi the finance minister being Mr. Michael Ferrier, as part of the reasons for providing then monies to the foundation, was that financially audited statements from the foundation would have been provided. A Council of Ministers decision dated March 2018. When this government took the oath of office on June the 25th, 2018, after that, and realizing of the need to have a strong, secured 50th Carnival celebration, deeply rooted in our governing program, we committed to that. However, afterwards, being a government of responsibility, transparency, openness, and accountability, immediately after those celebrations were done, not affecting the economic value it provided for us. To plan for this upcoming carnival season, certain things had to be put in place. And that was making sure that there were sound financial commitments provided by the SCDF. There were discussions, numerous, several email correspondence, 
And then a back and forth ensued between my person as the then Minister of Tiat and the SCDF. After all of that and all of the campaign and propaganda in the media, the SCDF committed to sign what would be the engagement letter as well as commit to study audit by the SOAB, a Council of Ministers decision. And why did the Council of Ministers take such a decision? Because based on the subsidy ordinance, foundations that receive subsidy are required to do such. Continuing on that fact, the SOAB engaged to have interviews, engage our discussions and be provided with the information. And I am just speaking on behalf of the number of persons that have reached out and, and shared their sentiments of approval and appreciation that Parliament has considered the proposal presented by my person uh, on behalf of the communities of St. Martin. This has been a long time coming. We have heard this on campaign trails over the years of persons interested in having district community councils um, being uh, established, but I seek to push it a little further of having a permanent committee established here in Parliament because I believe that the voice of the people is necessary. This is an opportunity to, to move away from people feeling like after uh, persons are elected, they do not have that connection with our representatives anymore. Okay, And I commit myself uh, to this committee to work diligently with the others who will become members of this committee to be able to represent the people. We look forward to having the councils come in here to Parliament to represent the people of our communities, the issues, the problems, and uh, working together as a village, so to speak, um, in the betterment of St. Martin. So Mr. Chairman, and once again to the members of Parliament, thank you for being here and giving us the opportunity to put this into placement. Thank you so much. On this committee, very important, I have been a community person for quite some time a member of the Cahill Community Council. I am someone that walks the streets on a regular basis. Why? Uh, because not only do I love the community, but I believe that uh, we need to be there for each other. As the MP mentioned, it really does take a village. And so I look forward to this initiative. I am also a proponent of civic engagement. And there is a political space that exists between residents and civil society and government. And how do we transform that space? We have to move in St. Martin away from just having discussions online. You know, everyone is on Facebook, they express themselves, they express their anger, how they feel. But how do we, we move further away from that? How do we, de how do we develop uh, true engagement? So not only government, but parliament has a responsibility to inform the public, and we do that pretty often. We're, we're okay, we're good with it. But how do we engage them? How do we empower them to be more than just persons who feel powerless and they can't do anything about it? And then again, there is a disconnect sometimes between uh, the representatives and the people. And so I, I truly believe that the power of this committee will be in how we create a better dialogue with the community 
and uh, hold ourselves more accountable to the committee. And I look forward, again, I commend MP Richardson, and uh, it's going to be an amazing opportunity to further develop civil society. I just would like to concur with the MPs who spoke before me, MP Richardson and MP Duncan, uh, with regards to the importance of this district council committee. Uh, I noticed the importance and therefore I signed with them to ensure that this matter came to Parliament as quickly as possible. There is a need for these district council committees and I would hope that the permanent committee that we will be voting on uh, in a short while, that that will help to encourage other districts to also establish committees so that they can be in touch with the parliament as well as government. I believe that it's very important for these committees to be established so that they can present to government and parliament uh, what is going on within the committee itself. And so I'm glad that I could have supported this initiative and I want to thank MP Richardson for coming with this initiative and I'm looking forward to also be part of this as we go forward.